I'm Victoria Modesta and I'm an artist, um, I'm a singer, I'm a writer, um, I kind of get involved with anything that is fashion, music, image related. The fight um, against being categorised has sort of like existed with me from like a very young age and um, you know and I thought I thought at some point I was going to shake it off but I just haven't. So this is an example of uh, a cover that's been made um, to go over a prosthetic leg. Um, and so this, the toes are solid, but everything else is sheet of silicon. So that will be turned inside out and put onto the leg, something like, like this. I was working um, with a little girl who wanted something a little bit different every time um, she came into the clinic. So she had a realistic leg, but she wanted little cartoon images around the top of her leg, and it changed every year. And I could see that this was like actually quite fun for her. So she was coming in and she was like, oh, well, you know, what can I have? And I just thought there must be people out there that would, would want something a little bit different and, you know, really maybe maybe something a little bit more extreme, you know. Um, and that's where I thought, oh, I'll just start experimenting, make some alternative limbs. And it's a kind of unspoken form of communication that, you know, their thoughts have been translated through their limb, almost a bit like tattoos, but like, you know, extreme, <laughs> full on. So I needed to find someone that I, I felt would, would be really up for experimenting, just be playful. Um, and so um, I, I found Victoria Modesta, and so she came on board really early. And, and that's when I worked on the, the speaker leg, and, um, and then soon after that it was the Paralympics. She had crystals all over her costume, and so it made sense to kind of continue that with the leg. Everything kind of changed in my mind after I did the Paralympics. I was all of a sudden part of this global movement that was happening everywhere and that everybody was talking about. It opened discussion, you know, what is disability, how people are perceived. Coming from Eastern Europe, you know, I, I sort of remember the really old-fashioned prejudice it's not really a secret. My early childhood was pretty grim. I was born in uh, the USSR before it uh, broke down. I had an accident at birth, which essentially ended up damaging my leg. By the age of six, I um, had a considerable um, difference in my leg because of, of it not growing properly. I pretty much spent the next six years uh, mostly in hospitals. It was a fairly traumatic time. It forced me into creating um, a kind of fantasy world in order for me to sort of survive the whole experience. The attitude around me at the time was very much like, you poor thing, you're destined to be broken, you know, and there was no way I was gonna accept that. My family moved to, uh, to London in 99 when I was 12. And then by the time I was about 15 and I was at a point where there needed to be drastic change, there needed to be a sense of me taking control over my body. And at that point, you know, I decided that I needed to have my leg removed. When I woke up from my operation, opening the covers and not seeing anything there at all, it was like Christmas. I think there's a really, really big difference in feeling like you are the victim of your circumstances and that you're actually making a choice.
I just directed a video for Victoria Modesta. I was inspired by her brave decision to amputate her leg at an age where many girls would find it difficult to alter themselves and make themselves different to other girls. She left her country and came to, to London at a very early age, integrated herself with fetish club scenes, with, with the nightlife scene in London. You know, she found a home for her difference and then, you know, created a character for herself. And it's never a more romantic character than someone like that. It's quite a sort of cinematic way to live. <laughs> you know, so that interested me, that inspired me. I'm trying to create a language for Victoria and people who think like Victoria to exist in popular culture. That's really, that's really what it is. So I, I got approached by Channel 4. They were looking to expand the angles, you know, post Paralympics. I felt like um, Channel 4 and Psalm wanted to help me express something that I kind of felt the need to express. And once they've kind of identified it, and once it kind of helped me to then identify what it is exactly that I want to say. You know, having someone approach you and say, we can see that you're trying to say X, Y, and Z, and we're going to help you get it across. I think, you know, that, that, was, um, that was the most kind of amazing part that happened to it. It wasn't your usual industry scenario where, um, you know, people tell you what to do and people tell you how you should look and what you should sing. And it was like true collaboration, you know, from the pick of the director to my styling team. The sort of harmony of all of it comes from the fact that my aesthetic, Channel 4's aesthetic and Psalm's aesthetic match very well. The video is an expression of... Uh, our most kind of like epic out there ideas. Like, let's do that, let's do that, you know? Why not? leg is the only one that really kind of goes into the um, bionic realm and it's oh, got, so it's got like an alternative yeah, function as well as the style yeah completely you know I think nice. the, the fact that it lights up the fact that the mechanic the mechanism is so exposed you know and the fact that it's actually got um, a light up function you know I mean in the video there's gonna be a um, moths following the light leg Which piece has spoken to you most, do you think? Uh, I think the spike leg. Yeah, I saw it in a dream, and in my dream, I was this body with a black spike on my leg. If anyone gets the pleasure of seeing a really high heel stiletto walking, you know, that kind of feeling where you go, oh, you know, and with a spike, you know, it has that amplified. It's a next level of like power dressing. You know, you have your high heels, you've got your shoulder pads, you've got your hair, like whatever the hell you've got, you know. But having that spike just transforms into like, I don't know, just like a different creature and stuff. When a prosthetic leg functions really well with my body, it does kind of go into sort of special powers, so to speak. I don't know, it's weird, but it does it does transform you into something else, you know, it does, you know, which, um, which I think is a great area to explore. Collectively, everyone felt that a spike just was such a powerful and immediate uh, fantasy prosthetic that we were surprised we hadn't seen. It was very important to me to show her without prosthetic because I think it's very easy for culture to um, to embrace the idea of an amputee if we if we put her in, a, in an elegant bejeweled prosthetic if we are actually going to get ahead we need to start accepting the whole kit and caboodle but at the end of her leg this um, surgical stump it was amputated there was skin there was blood it was sewed up it had to heal the, the physical realities that I think often we don't really kind of have. 
And I think it was very important to create a deliberate collision between those realities and the, um, the fantasies of sexualization in pop culture. I think that was, that's a very important thing. Sam was really keen to capture a very multidimensional view of my life and my personality, you know, and obviously uh, the feeling of confidence and sexual liberation and uh, exploration and genuinely just the fact that I'm really comfortable with my sexuality was really important. The bed scene, I would like to think that it isn't something that's going to be shocking if people are interested in uh, seeing somebody cycle with uh, one leg missing from their hip, why wouldn't they be interested in something really um, ordinary and daily, like uh, being in bed naked? There is nothing that unusual about it. It shouldn't be something that a person should be embarrassed about, you know? Like, people don't ever ask, you know, what is a person in a wheelchair, you know, do they have a sex life? You know, why don't you ask them? Why don't you find out? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and I, I'm just, I'm, I, think, I think all I'm trying to do is just bring some sort of equality into the equation. think of myself as a modern feminist. Some women, um, you know, have the gift of, of beauty, of charm, of all the kind of feminine qualities which are completely unique to them. And, you know, they have every right to use them in whatever the way they want. What is she trying to do with her art? What is she trying to do is a big question. I don't think she's put herself out there to suddenly, you know, to, to, to take on um, you know, the word disablism, what it means to everyone. She's gone on her own personal journey and she's explored it and, and it just so happens she's explored it quite publicly. I think she's trying to be the, the fullest, richest version of herself that she can. And I think that she's trying to find a, a character or an identity that can encompass all those things. I don't have uh, a body that is uh, considered to be healthy in normal terms but I have a body that, you know, I'm proud of, that I'm able to make a choice with. It's not something that defines me, but luckily it's something that helped me become the person that I am. The video is naughty because Victoria is a naughty person. It's part of her persona and uh, she deserves to be naughty and people like her deserve to be badly behaved. I didn't know it was different. <laughs> I didn't know I was different at all. I mean, I don't even know if I'm different now, but uh, it seems to be what, uh, what I'm told, so uh, I guess this must be true, huh? <laughs>